Hello everybody, welcome to this next tutorial about how to setting up a function block in structural text. This is just a little setup of what I build. You see the LED blinking at the back. Alright, so we're going to talk about function block, web visualization and how to set variables. So if you reboot the Raspberry Pi, it's still there. So first of all, I'm going to make a new project. I'm going to show you everything again. So choose for standard project, give the project a name, set it to the folder you want to save it to. Sorry for the fact you're not seeing my mouse, but it's the new screen recorder uh, pro, I'm trying. This time we will run a lot quicker through the programming and everything is setting up. So this is the Raspberry Pi, just select the Raspberry Pi. Here you select the program language, I just put the letter diagram. PLC PRG, you can actually program your main program. But first of all, we're going to make a variable list that sticks and it's called persistent var or persistent variable. Always looking for that. Uh, in this list, you can make the variables that uh, if the Raspberry Pi reboots, it will uh, save the last position the variable was in. So when it reboots, it will be in the last position it was before rebooting. All right, so when we're done with that, we're gonna go to application again, add object, and this time we're gonna add a POU. Um, in a POU, you can actually add a program or a function block, wherever you like. We're gonna choose function block, and we're gonna give it a name, in this, uh, in this case, uh, lamp control. Uh, here you can select uh, the program language, and we do structural text. So press add. And uh, first of all, we're going to set the variables we're going to use in this uh, program. So we got a button for lamp one. Uh, here you can see me choosing a variable in an output. And we got button two, button three, lamp one, lamp two, lamp three, and lamp four. We got four lamps in total on the display. Um, be sure they're all Boolean because. There, the, there are boolean and then we have to put the buttons just an input and the other ones are an in and output so here you can see what kind of uh, program units you can choose besides boolean then we go to the programming the hard coding so it's an if statement if button one just have a good look at it type it just exactly like I do, or just play a little bit with it. Um, every time you type a new command, it will automatically execute the end of the command. So if you see right now, every time I type an if, an end if appears. Uh, but in the very end, uh, be sure that all the end ifs are there. If there is one end if missing, uh, the program will not run. It will not execute. And there is a really easy way of uh, telling if you're missing an end if. Just go to the if and the end if will pop up in a square or go to the end if and the if will pop in a square. So that's a real way of checking if it's all done. So we're almost finished with writing the code. As soon as we're all finished with writing the code, we're gonna select the part that we're gonna reuse uh, for th about three times. Just use control copy, control paste. It's really easy. Only the first statement, and this time I use uh, an uh, else if. Uh, only the first statement is the thing I do by hand. The rest is just copying the code and just do some minor uh, adjustments to it because not all the right lamps are in the right positions so we're going to do that again and just some minor
until you have it at about three times. So the last one I'm going to do a little bit different than the other three because the last one only pops on when the other three are not working. It's an indication to show me that actually none of the lamps are selected. If if a lamp would be broken, uh, I, I can tell because it indicator would be off and all the lights would be off as well. So then I know something is wrong with the program. So those are just like uh, three if statements right after each other. So I'm checking again all those ifs uh, with the end if it's all correct. All right, so it's all correct. We move to the actual program, PLC PRG. We select the POU unit from the right side. Uh, you just saw that going real quick. Sorry for that, but you can still see it on the right side. So when you put in the function block, it will tell you if it's that function block, blah, blah, blah. I most of the time just press enter because just give it a name. And now we're going to put some variables in at the top of the list because beside the function block, we need uh, a button. So we put button green, button blue, button red, and we put the gray uh, lamp in it. And the gray lamp, we're going to add it a little bit. We're going to set the var at the very end. We're going to set it to var and then the option beneath it retain. So it will... Uh, write the variable to the memory if it changes with uh, all the benefits if it reboots it will take the last position it was in so now we're going to select all the variables put them into place so always select them and the bar next to it with three dots always pick the variables from that sometimes i pick the wrong one like i'm doing right now all right so i'm just going to skip a little bit forward with this because just play with it a little bit <laughs> You will see what I mean. So now it goes a little quicker. All right. So after we've done this, we're going back to application and we open a visual uh, visualization. So and since we're on the Raspberry Pi, it's going to be automatically a web visualization. So if we're going to open a visualization. Uh, we're going to open as well and you can click on application and it's called an image pool. Now with an image pool you can actually uh, uh, add images from your computer or whatever. Uh, in this case I'm going to select an image. That's something nice to look at. Alright, so now we're going to the background, going to select image. And if now we're now going to look through our files, we see image pool. So that's the image I want to look at. All right. So just zoom a little bit out so you guys get a bit of an idea what image it is. You saw it in the beginning as well. Here I always put it on, uh, on the middle one. Don't know how to pronounce that in English, to be honest. And be sure you go to properties and select uh, the background. That it scales on the background as well. Otherwise, your, your image is not completely on it. It says on properties and visualization. So now we're going to put three, uh, four lamps. All right, so those are the four lamps. Now we just need three buttons. So just go a little bit quick through this. All right, so that's our three buttons. So we're going to put a variable in and the color, first color and then the variable, apparently. So the variables are at the, uh, uh, except for the gray one that's in the PLC PRG, but the rest is in the uh, uh, persistent variable list. So keep that in mind if you're looking for the variables. So kind of skip a little bit forward with the other. All right, so that's done. Now we're going to do the buttons. So first we're going to set the color, uh, put the text in it, of course. Then we put the color in it. If I always, if I choose for one color, it goes to a little black. So I don't like that much. So I always choose two colors and just make them both blue. Then the button is completely blue. Go to input. 
uh, setups go to tab and there you will uh, put your variable in input configuration it was sorry for that so I do that with all three of them so going through the high speed all right so sending the variable as well red was gone now it's back on all right checking everything everything is checked okay it looks good oh there was one thing i forgot to tell you guys with uh, programming because i didn't do that um there is one problem with program now that's why you have to put in triggers in between because otherwise if you press one button one button press will be longer than one cycle so it would turn the lamp on off on off on off depends on how much you how long you hold it with this it just creates a pulse so it will work one time once you push the button so add those triggers and after you've done that you can go to you can load the program in like I'm doing right now and you can put them on run and after that you will have this